There's a saying and an understanding in the New Testament that I find really compelling. That the mystery of God is Christ and the mystery of Christ is the church. So they say that in the New Testament to say God is boundless. And we've been hearing stories of God's boundless mercy and we don't understand it, but we're called. We can approach it and, and go to it. But God is so boundless, so there's a mystery there. But in Jesus' life, there's a hint or an explanation or something to grab onto about God, something we can understand. So the mystery of God is Christ. It comes a bit closer to us. But then Jesus is pretty boundless too, right? We think we might know him or have come closer or we hear one word and understand it and another story and completely don't understand it. So Jesus is expansive and boundless too. Jesus is a bit of a mystery. How would we grab on to the mystery of Jesus? Paul and New Testament writers say the mystery of Christ is the church. There's something you can grab onto and understand, a hint of who Jesus is. So with that in mind, hear this reading from 2 Corinthians that calls us to reconciliation. And then hear this famous story that Jesus tells about God loving and opening the doors and welcoming the world. In Luke chapter 15, you probably know there are three stories of lost things being found right? That reading would be even longer than what we had today. The lost things are a sheep that goes and gets found, a coin that the woman can't find around the home, and then the prodigal son or both sons. Jesus tells these parables back to back. These are lost things becoming found or coming home. And in each case, there's an ensuing party. And when Jesus tells these parables, the context is there are two groups listening. One is the Pharisees and scribes, who we've heard from the Gospels, aren't really there to learn and grow from Jesus. They're pushing back. They're maybe keeping this prophet in check. They're there to critique Jesus and even to complain about the way he is teaching and forgiving and healing. The phrase that stood out to me as I tried to read this story with some fresh eyes saying, okay, we've heard this a lot. Uh, what do I see when I read it this time? Was how this group of grumblers, the Pharisees and scribes, they say, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So hear that today, church. The mystery of God is Christ. And this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. Now, there's another group that's there to be with Jesus, and they actually are there to get some needs met and to learn. It's those who've been suffering. Now, the Bible says we're all sinners and have fallen short of the glory of God. But in these stories with Jesus, the onlookers point to certain groups around Jesus and say, those are the sinners. They are more easy to point to and say, they definitely don't have it together. I mean, I try hard and I mess up sometimes, but Jesus is over there hanging out with some true sinners. It says, the tax collectors and the sinners have gathered, and the Pharisees and scribes have gathered. And so he told them this parable. We know the story Jesus tells. And I don't just mean you know how it goes, although I bet 
you did before we read it today. I wonder how many times you've heard it. But I mean, we know this story of a family like this. You've lived this story. Or you've been close to people who have lived this story. Parents and children, grandparents, aunts and uncles and cousins and godparents. It might have been your neighbor or a friend of your family. We know this story Jesus tells of a lost and wandering child and a parent or a caring one who is full of love. And that it is this human story of waiting for connection again. And so today I ask you to open your heart because I don't know how that story played out in your situation. But Christ, who is the mystery of God, tells this story with a parent who has this power that is relentless and gracious and is ready to welcome the lost home whenever they show up and then even go out to the hardworking, righteous child and say, come in here and celebrate with us. You are always with me. Jesus tells a story about our Heavenly Father, and it's what Jesus has lived to. This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. This parable is a Lenten story. Because you remember how when we started with Ash Wednesday and we talked so much about repentance, and we talked about how repent means turn around. Well, in this story, the wayward son sort of finally turns around and heads for home. He's reached rock bottom, and there is seemingly nothing left for him to do but turn around. His life, this world, his desires and sin, it has brought him low on par with the pigs eating the pods. And so whatever dream or entitlement or ego with which he had left home and taken that early inheritance and gone to a distant country, that has all come to an end. He has come to his end. And this is a Lenten story about a truth in our lives. Remember that you are dust. Remember that you have an end. When Jesus is tempted in the desert, it's a temptation not to think like that, but instead, what do you want to have? What do you want to have people say about you? What do you want to do? You can do so many great things. And all of that temptation culminates as a seeking after vanity. And so it's good that in this story, the son reaches his end. In the words of AA or the 12-step programs, the son has seemingly reached this moment where he is powerless and he admits his life is unmanageable. And this is a Lenten story because, yeah, there's a celebration but we can see the suffering and death in the story. And in these 40 days of Lent, we cannot escape the truth of our lives that we sin and we die. This is true. This is also true. This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. The son turns for home, and I think it was a gift of faith. You know, he was given, maybe God was whispering to his heart, go on home. And when he does, he's greeted by the merciful father. And like in all the stories that Jesus tells of the lost things becoming found, there's a huge party. And even for the son who didn't go off into the wild living, He doesn't want to come into the party, but the story says the father goes out to meet him too, calling him in. 
You are always with me. All that I have is yours. Come on, we have to celebrate. So I said the mystery of God is Christ. And the mystery of Christ is the church. Today, I mean that Jesus, this welcoming fellow, calls us to be the hands and feet of that grace in our world. What Jesus has done and what he's preached and lived has been extravagantly generous. It hasn't looked fair. He isn't talking about a rule of spiritual life that must be followed, but he's preaching and living a kingdom and a new creative economy and a nature that values welcome over isolation and community over fighting and is a nature of reconciliation and love like the best of families. So our question and our quest together as Christ's church is to keep asking each other, how do we live out this table of grace? So that they might say, Faith Lutheran Church, those fellows, that church welcomes sinners and eats with them. I don't know where you find yourself in today's story because we can. Maybe you are called today to repent and return to God or return to something that you have run from. Or maybe you're like the older brother and you are called today to soften your heart and celebrate restoration and cooperate with the celebrating outside the systems of the way to work to righteousness. Or maybe today you were called today to practice the generosity of this extravagant parent. There is graceful work we can do. But don't miss the main point. God is always calling us to trust and come home to love. God throws a party when the wayward return, saying, you are home. You belong. I am with you. All I have is yours. And because Jesus lived and died our death and rose again, it means that in this life, you and I will reach an end. Sometimes again and again, we reach our ends. And then before we can even fully confess to God, we are given new birth, cleansed from sin, and raised to eternal life. Truly, this fellow again today welcomes sinners and eats with them again today with us. Amen. Source of grace and mercy, and we see it and